contrary to decades of prevarication. Dramatic illustration is the torture of Cuba for 60 years, including John F. Kennedy's terrorist war against Cuba, which almost led to nuclear war in 1962, and the crushing blockade that's strongly opposed by virtually the entire world, even a large majority of Americans. When the Soviet Union collapsed and withdrew its limited support for Cuba, the misimpression collapsed with it, and the U.S. instituted still more brutal measures to crush Cuba, with Clinton outflanking Bush from the right. The misimpressions that are designed to subdue the general public are stripped away in internal documents, which are admirably frank. So the actual reasons for the torture of Cuba are explained in declassified documents from the Kennedy Johnson years, the 1960s. Cuba's crime is called its successful defiance of US policies dating back to the Monroe Doctrine of 1823, which declared Washington's right to dominate the hemisphere, a principle that extended far more broadly after World War II. We have just commemorated the 20th anniversary of one of the mechanisms used to strangle Cuba, control of the Guantanamo Bay naval facilities vital for Cuba's development. It was stolen from Cuba at gunpoint in 1903 as part of the system for maintaining Cuba as a virtual colony after the United States had intervened to prevent Cuba's liberation from Spain. Cuba's efforts to reclaim Guantanamo have been rebuffed. For many years, it was used illegally to hold Haitians fleeing from US-backed terror and misery. Twenty years ago, the Bush administration moved on, turning it into the world, one of the world's most horrendous torture chambers, still holding brutalized victims without charges. Well, information about all these and innumerable other matters was provided to American and the world public by WikiLeaks. The crimes that cannot be forgiven as power begins to evaporate when exposed to sunlight.